Hey everybody, I am Stacy. I'm the owner and artist of New Creations by Stacy, and I'm an elite Dixie Bell retailer here in Ardmore, Alabama at the Rustic Willow. Um, I also carry Redesign with Crema products as well. Um, at Vintage 72, I have a little bit of overstock, and then I do have Redesign with Prima as well at the Rustic Willow, and then I'm also a retail content creator for um, Redesign with Prima. Hey, so I see I'm live. I see somebody on. Um, so tonight, you guys, um, I told you, the last few lives I've done, if you've been on, um, I've done, I'm trying to finish up projects. Um, so we've got these chairs that we're going to be finishing up here. It's Alice in Wonderland. So we're going to be putting on some transfers. Um, and we're going to talk about, so I don't do a lot of videos on Protectin, but we talked about options last week. Um, so once we get the transfers on, we're just going to talk about how to choose the best protectant. So as you guys are popping on, just say, hey, where you're watching from. Happy Friday. Hey, Wanda. All right. So some of this might be a little repetitive, um, but let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to actually bring you guys in and drop you down. I've got both of the chairs here and we're going to do the transfer on both of them. So I'm going to pop this down. I'm still working a little bit on the bottom, but I want to get these done by tomorrow. So even after the live, I'll be working on them. So we're going to be using Alice in Wonderland. This is the first trans, the first Alice in Wonderland that Dixie came out, Dixie Bell came out with. Um, oh goodness. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt your dinner. <laughs> and I'm kind of loud anyway, I'm told. <laughs> All right, so I've used some of this transfer already. I've done a couple projects with it. Um, there was actually a stool that went with these chairs, but I finished it early and it sold almost immediately. But this, these are some of the things. It comes in four sheets, the Alice in Wonderland transfer. Um, and you guys, I'm trying to use at the first one. Hey, Mike. I'm trying to use up the first one, but the second one is really cool. Um, this first one here is pretty directional, and you'll see what I'm talking about um, once we start working with it. And I've got some other scraps here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys in, pop you down, and we're going to pick out what we're going to put on these chairs and design it right quick. And hopefully I'll still be able to see comments, but just in case... Um, yeah, actually, no, I'll be able to see comments fine. So you can kind of see. So what I've done so far on these chairs, I did clean them with white lightning. It's, that's a TSP solution. Um, it's specifically for prepping. Um, so it's always the first thing that you want to do. Um, so I cleaned these with white lightning. And then I didn't even have to do a quick scuff sand on them because there was no finish. Um, I mean, it was just raw wood. So I just went ahead and started painting. Um, I am using silk in conch. That's the pretty pink you see here. And then I'm also using harbor in silk, which by the way, the silk has, and I'm using white cap, which is the white here. Um, silk has a built-in protectant as well as a built-in blocking primer. So um, even though I was painting on raw wood, I don't have to worry about these bleeding because each coat that I put of the silk paint on here has what's equivalent to one coat of a stain blocking primer in it um, to block those tannins from the wood bleeding through. Um, so right now I've just got Tweedledee and Tweedledum on here. So I want to go ahead... And I think for this chair, I'm a little planned out. I think I want to go ahead and put the clock up here. And you guys, I hand painted um, this Harlequin on the back side of the chair. And honestly, I want to cover up a few things as well. So I want to get this kind of up in the corner. Um, but I want it to look right too. So I think I'll kind of put that there. And I think I want some little flowers over here or something like that. Um, I'd love another little character looking back, but like I said, they're very directional. So their eyes are pointing this way. Um, 
And if I put another character over here looking off the chair, from a, a visual design perspective, that's just going to lead your eyes away from the piece, and that's not what you want. So I think I've got to put something in that corner, though, that they're over there looking at. And um, let's see. I think we're going to go ahead and go with some of these little flowers here. I'm just going to cut those out. So you guys, if you have any questions, if I happen to, hey, Helen, if I happen to miss anything, um, I'll go back after the live and answer any comments or anything like that. And if you have questions, it doesn't have to pertain to this. It can be about, it can be about anything. All right, so I'm just going to get this flower out of here. So these transfers, they also come with a um, a little stick, an applicator stick, which I have over here, and then some little tips and tricks, instructions on how to apply them and stuff like that. So, oh, I'd like that little bouquet of flowers to be a little bit bigger, especially because that clock is so big. So let me see what else I can find on here. Could do a crown too. Or I could bunch up a couple of flowers. Hmm. So we could layer in, and I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, let's go ahead and layer in another little set of flowers. So I'm going to take these flowers off here as well. We'll see how that looks. Or maybe we could have a little mushroom popping out of the flowers. I don't know. And I think I want to use this rabbit right here for the other chair. So I'm going to go ahead and get him cut out too. So you guys, I don't know if it's just me or not, but when this transfer came out, I had to actually go back and look up Alice in Wonderland because I literally just could not remember all of these characters and everything else. So that rabbit, he's a little bit big, but he'll work. Then let's go ahead and cut out these flowers here. And hopefully we can layer those in. Yeah, that should work. We'll just layer those in on the bottom. All right, so let's go ahead and put these down first. So let's see, if I set this one here, I'm just laying it out right now. I don't want it to stick exactly. I can make that bunch kind of go up and around. I think I might move this down a little bit though. So you guys, you want your paint to be well dried before you um, start using a transfer on it. So the recommendation is actually 24 hours to let your paint dry before you um, before you put a transfer on. Um, so this up here, this has been done for a long time. This is one of those projects I started and never finished. I was just doing it for fun. Um, so I just, I've got, I've got a lot of those projects. I've got to start getting them out. And I'm getting ready to start a really involved custom on Monday for the live, so want to get these out and done. So what I'm doing is I'm just rubbing down my transfer as I'm pulling back and I'm rubbing on the area that I'm pulling back. So I'm going to layer these a little bit. So I want to go ahead and burnish this um, to make sure that it's really well adhered to make sure um, everything is stuck down. Also, these have a little halo around them and sometimes they can shred a little bit. So I just want to make sure that that is all down as well. So we've got that on and then let's go ahead and layer on this other flower here. I think I kind of want to bring it up around the side maybe. Kind of make it look like a corner. Let's see, that should work. And so again, I'm just going to at first rub my transfer down, make sure it's stuck to my piece. And you guys, so right here, I had to cut kind of close to the transfer. So 
when I'm rubbing, if I accidentally rub my stick off, I can actually leave a mark on my paint from this little stick. So one of the tricks around that is just take your clear plastic piece, put it on here with the really slick side up, and you can rub and not have to worry about messing up your paint or going over where that original um, piece of plastic was. So once you do that, we're just gonna go ahead, here, let me see if I can pull this off backwards. You're just gonna rub well, actually, let me go ahead and bring you guys back a little bit so that way my hand isn't in the way and you have a better view. I'm going to drop you down to, I think I can still see comments from here, and this will get you a little closer, especially for these smaller pieces. So see, I'm rubbing up, and once I'm pulling up, You'll see where it, it looks a little bit lighter over here than it does right here. That's just already released from the plastic. So you wanna make sure your edges release really well and usually the rest of your transfer, that whole big section will release pretty easily once you get those edges down. So you're just gonna keep pulling back and rubbing. And when you're overlapping, um, the, let's see, I'm gonna actually use my other little sheet of plastic that I just had, or maybe, here it is, nope. Actually, I'm just gonna bend this over and use this, cause I'm coming to the end and I want that to go ahead and release, there it is, it just popped right off. So we've got those little flowers over in the corner and we're gonna go ahead and burnish that down again. Hey, Pam. Want to make sure it's stepped down really well. And then let's go ahead. I think I'm going to put the clock right up here. I don't know that I really like those flowers as much as I thought I would. So for the clock, we're just going to go ahead and I think probably, you know what, I wanted to put something, I might put something else up here. This clock needs to come down further because proportion-wise, these flowers are just too small to have the clock way up here. So I may go back in and put something else over here. So we're just gonna go ahead, again, rub the transfer down, start from one side, move it over to the other. Don't go from the outsides towards the middle um, because you don't want any bubbles. You want your transfer really well adhered. Well, you guys, everybody must be outside today. I It's 80 degrees here um, in Alabama, or probably over 80. I'm not even really sure. It is gorgeous, and the sun is shining. Let's see here. We're just pulling that back, making sure it releases. And you guys, if you're catching this on replay later, just do hashtag replay. There we go. All right, so we've got that down. And we're just gonna make sure that that is all burnished down, no loose spots. And I think what I wanna do is put something right here at this kind of angle right there. Um, so let's see what else we've got. Hey, Philippa, how are you? Good morning. So I just want kind of something small, and I definitely don't think I want the crown. Um, but I want something that looks like it belongs to up there. I don't know about these teapots. Yeah. But I think I am gonna take Alice here because I think I'm gonna have her standing with the rabbit on that chair. And I think kind of my only choices here are one of the teapots or a little scroll work or a crown. I wonder what a little scroll work would look like. Let's check that out. That'll bring in the harbor too that we have on the chair already. Um, we'll keep this teapot on here too, just in case. I 
actually, I don't really like that. I think I might just, hmm, if I painted some, yeah, see, I'm just making it more complicated. That teapot wouldn't be so bad if I painted some stuff coming out of it, kind of tipping over, but I don't want to do that. I think I'm going to actually go ahead and set this off to the side. And this is the one we're actually going to be protecting here in a little bit um, because I've still got to paint out uh, some of these right here. So I wanted to show you um, kind of what I do at this point before I go to put the transfer on because this is painted um, and I used the Harlequin stencil so I dabbed it on. But when you feel it, it's very rough and I want it to be a nice, smooth surface and feel good. So I'm actually using some red pads, which I do carry in the store. Um, these are from Surf Prep. This is a super fine one, and it's equivalent to about a 600 grit sandpaper. So it's just, it's not gonna distress anything, but it's gonna smooth it out quite a bit. So you just do a quick little sanding across here. And that's it. And now you don't have all those ridges. You don't have that rough feel anymore. It's nice and smooth. So before though you put a transfer on here, um, you wanna make sure there's no dust. You wanna be working on a clean surface. So you want to use a tack cloth which I have right here. Oh, hey, Wanda, what you have for dinner? <laughs> I'm starving, you guys. <laughs> I just didn't have time, though, before the live. So I've got a tack cloth here, and I'm just going to go and get all the dust off. Because if you have dust particles under this transfer, the dust particles are not stuck to your piece. That's all the transfer is going to stick to you. And you'll have a problem not only with it releasing, but also with it um, staying adhered over time. So, and no matter what you do with protectant, it's not going to, um, it's not going to make your transfer adhere more. So, we're going to do the rabbit. And you know what? Ah, uh, he's taller than I thought. And I, I don't have all these over here. So actually quickly, and I've got enough time, I'm gonna go ahead and paint out, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, well, actually I don't wanna paint it out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put him on. I think I can place him so he's not going to be where I need to paint another diamond up there. So, Friday and I was starving, so I met him. Oh, yes. You know, I just went to um, Rosie's for the first time not that long ago. Oh, it is so good. So good. All right. So, I've got his rabbit ears right there, so where I will not have an issue painting on the rest of this Harlequin, except for I don't think I have them straight up and down. So I'm gonna, this is the nice thing about these transfers. As long as you don't rub it down too much, you can pull it back up and reposition it. You just wanna reposition it slowly to make sure that you're not, um, or pull it back up slowly to make sure there's no section where it's sticking. If you just rip it off, you might have a situation where part of it sticks and the other part doesn't. So I'm just making sure he's straight up and down kind of here. There we go. So all we're gonna do is go ahead and same thing we did on the other pieces. Just gonna make sure, rub it down, make sure it, it's adhering overall. Just do it in one direction so you don't have any bubbles. And so the chairs are slightly curved here. Um, so you definitely wanna make sure that you go in one direction to the other side because if you don't, on a curved piece, that's especially where you could potentially get those air bubbles. 
think I've been to Mia Casa. All right. So now that we've got it rubbed down, we're just going to start over here. Oops. And as I'm pulling up, I'm just rubbing in that area to get it to release. And when you have one larger image with not as many, um, I guess, outside connection points is how you would put it, it typically goes on a little bit faster, a little bit easier. Not really easier, I guess, but definitely faster. But this is a quiet night, you guys. All right. Just coming over here. One of the reasons that I move around a lot, too, is because and I say this a lot when I'm working with transfers. If you disconnect completely at the other end, sometimes it's hard to, um, or uh, sometimes when you're pulling that last section off, that last, like his ear could chip off a little bit if that end point wasn't stuck. So I always like to, once I'm getting to the end, I always like to come back over on the other side and kind of meet in the middle for it to completely release. That way it's more likely not to damage, not to get damaged. Um, oh, that's right, Philippa, you are. You're, <laughs> what time is it there for you guys anyway exactly? I know it's morning, but there we go. So we've got the rabbit on, he's looking pretty good. And then we're gonna go ahead and burnish him down. And you're really just making sure that everything is stuck down. Um, you get all, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So hopefully you can see right here, you can see where that little halo, let me kind of get in there. You can see where that little halo is kind of not adhered. That area sometimes gets a little stringy and you just want to use this finishing pad. You rub it lightly at first. And then put a little bit more pressure on it. And that is going to take all that off. So that's actually what I'm ending up wiping off of here. And also this finishing pad will make your paint slightly smoother too. Not as much as the fine grit sandpaper, but it will smooth it out some. All right, so he's nice and stuck down. All right, and then I think I'm going to go with Alice standing in front of him. I really kind of like this one of Alice holding the bird. Oh, it's 8.30? Okay, wow. That's so odd to me that it's Saturday. I don't know why, but <laughs> it's Saturday for you. I think, I think the UK is only about five hours ahead of us here. We're Central Standard Time. But I always feel like they should be so much different than so much further, or that they are so much further ahead. Let's see here. I eh, don't know if I like Alice on here. And this is what I mean. Like, there's, I, I don't want to put her over here looking off of the chair whenever you're doing the design, but I don't think I like her there, so I think I'm gonna leave her off for right now. And I think I'm gonna end up putting a teapot here, maybe with some of those flowers around there. So these two images are very close. So this is where you'd wanna utilize that trick where you have a piece of plastic, when you're rubbing it down, because I, I even had to cut some of the halo off these flowers um, because it's just so close there. And then we're gonna move on to talk about the protectant. Hmm. I wonder if I could layer, how that would look layered. I don't know. 
Let's see. Well, let's go ahead and put the teapot on here. And then maybe I really would like to layer those other flowers in. Hmm. Wouldn't that be cool if they look like they were coming out of the teapot? Kind of indecisive today. So let's go ahead. Let's put it on an angle, kind of along the lines of the of the Harlequin here. And this is the last one we'll put on, and then we'll kind of talk about the protecting a little bit. And I'll go ahead and start protecting the top on this other one. Um, I've got more stuff to do on the bottom, though. I think I'm going to put some polka dots on there. Just a few polka dots here and there on the chair legs. Plus, I've got to paint the rest of these bands out. So we're just releasing it now. So these transfers go on pretty quick. I mean, depending on what you're doing. This is a relatively small piece. Coming over here so you guys can hopefully have a better view on camera of how this is releasing. And I've got the edges of these little spouts, so I just want to get those pretty good. And now I've got almost everything released, so I'm just going to come around to the top here. And so I can meet back in the middle. And there we go. All right. I know, and since the stool sold already, I feel like I need to do like a little nightstand or something to go with these chairs. <laughs> All right, so talking about protectant, um, as far as that's concerned, so these are kids' chairs. So the fact that we went over all the different types of protectant last week, but how do you choose which one to use? Um, so because I have transfers on here, I cannot directly use an oil-based protectant on them. So that's going to rule out the hemp oil as well as the Big Mama's Butter. I'm going to raise you guys up some because actually this part we're going to do up here. But that's going to rule out the hemp oil and the Big Mama's Butter. So the next thing is kind of how much use are, is your piece going to get? Is it going to be like a high traffic piece or is it going to be something that just hangs on the wall? Um, you know, that's really important how much use it's going to get. So, like, if it's, um, like, say it's a shelf or it's a, um, a frame or something like that, that's not going to get a lot of touching, a lot of feeling. So, for something like that, we can look at the Best Dang Wax. Um, it can go over transfers because it's water-based. Um, and then we also have Easy Peasy Spray Wax. So... In that case, because of the size of it, I would definitely pick Easy Peasy Spray Wax because it's going to cure totally within six hours. It's going to dry within 15 to 30 minutes, and it's not a lot of traffic, so you're not going to really have to worry about, um, you know, doing anything else to it later on. Um, wax looks beautiful. It brings out the color nicely, but these kids' chairs are going to get a ton of use. And over time, that wax um, dissipates and you have to re-wax it. So, you know, like a year from now, you're going to have to re-wax. So, on these kids' chairs, I would not choose to wax them. Um, on fabric, for example, though, I Easy Peasy Spray Wax on fabric is the perfect protectant. Um, so, that's what I'm looking at here. So, I'm going to rule out the waxes because they're not the best protectant. So that leaves me with the clear coats and gator hide. Um, so gator hide cannot go directly on a transfer, but kids' chairs, very likely they could spill stuff on them. They're going to be hard on them. Hey, Julie, they're going to be hard on them. So hands down, if we weren't going through this shortage with gator hide, I would actually use two coats of clear coat to create a barrier between my transfer and the gator hide. So gator hide is water repellent. Um, for kids, I would definitely pick that. Any other regular chair, I wouldn't necessarily pick Gator Hide. I'd be fine with a clear coat. Um, but in this case, um, 
I'm going to choose to use a clear coat because of the gator hide um, being out of stock. Uh, so I'm going to choose clear coat because that's the next most protective um, barrier that I can have. It's going to last longer than wax as well as it's, <coughs> it's water resistant. So that's a little bit different. Gator hide you can use for outside. Um, clear coat, it's water resistant, not water repellent like gator hide. So that's kind of the difference. Um, now, silk has a built-in protectant. It's equivalent to a clear coat for every coat of silk you have on here. So this is already protected. If I was using chalk mineral paint, I would only put, or excuse me, I would put three coats of clear coat on here. But I'm using silk. So it already has that built-in protectant, so it's not as porous, so it is washable even without it. You'd not require to protect over silk, but kids, kids are not easy on stuff. And this is kids' furniture, so I am definitely going to put at least one coat of clear coat on here. If I have really good coverage, I may stop at that point, but otherwise, um, I may do two coats. I don't know. I'll see how how um, how well I do coverage wise. So, like I said, clear coat is what I'm choosing, and that comes in satin gloss and flat. Um, flat would be pretty on here, but um, I kind of want it to be a little shiny. You know, it's Alice in Wonderland. Um, so I want it to be a little bit shiny, but not not too shiny, not glossy. So we are going to use satin, and I'm going to do a little bit on here. Um, we've got a few minutes. So just went ahead and put a little satin in here. And so for this, I'm actually going to use two different brushes to protect. Um, because I... To me, it's easier to protect spindles and legs, even if they're straight legs, with a small round brush. Um, because it's it's specifically for stuff like this. It is a synthetic brush, so it's going to decrease the amount of brush strokes. And it's, it's round, so it just kind of, when you go through it, it just kind of flows around. You can see kind of how it's going on. Flows around the leg and the spindles. Um, for this flat surface, though, I don't want to take all day putting the protectant on, so I am going to use a larger brush. This is an oval small here. Um, you could use an oval medium as well, but we're just going to quickly go ahead and bring you guys in a little bit. We're just going to quickly put this on. So you do want to work quickly when you're using the clear coat. Because, oh, I've got something on there. You do want to use, work quickly when you're using the clear coat because it, it does dry relatively quickly. Um, and if you continue to try to work it, once it starts to dry, it will create drag marks and streaking. So you only want to make a few passes, spread it out. And what I'm doing is I keep going back over this edge because it will have a tendency to drip, to drip over an edge. So you just want to always be leery or wary, aware of that so that you don't get one of those little paint ridges. So this is an oval brush, and if this was the only brush I had, this would be fine for me to use on the legs as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it around here because we just want to get the back of the seat. And I might have a few spots I need to touch up on here. So also, this doesn't apply to silk because I told you it has a built-in blocker. 
But when you put protectant on like white paint and it turns yellow, this is just kind of a side note, and it turns yellow, um, that is not your paint actually yellowing. What happens is when you put protectant on it, it draws the tannins and the wood out and that's where this blocker comes in at. So I'm just offloading my brush so I can get that nice smooth, um, spread out the paint nice and smoothly and quickly. So let's go ahead and get this other side. So if you are putting on your protectant and your piece is starting to yellow, that means that you need a stain blocking primer that your wood is bleeding. Um, typically you'll have like oak that's a bleeder. It bleeds a, a light color, but cherry, mahogany, um, all of those will typically, will typically bleed through. The knots in pine, um, so if you're using a light color and it's not silk with a built-in primer, you definitely want to use Boss. And then we'll go ahead and do a couple spindles. Um, we've got a few minutes here. So spindles are never fun if you guys, um, paint, you know. <laughs> and I'm not, I don't know that I know ever a good way to do spindles. I typically go off to the side like this to get the coverage all the way around the spindle. And then just go up and down to kind of smooth it out. Make sure I don't have a lot of lines. There's a couple spots I definitely want to touch up here. A lot of this is painted by hand. As far as these rings, there's no taping off or anything like that. So... It's not perfect. Just want to make sure that you spread your everything out really nicely around the um, around the spindles because you'll tend to get a buildup on the edges as well. But I just offload my brush, spread it around. Another thing is you want to make sure everything else is clear because you are making little splatters with this protectant that you will find later. Just a little tip. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. Hey, Thelma, how are you? So this is it. Let's get it offloaded. Make sure you just have good coverage that you're hitting everything. And that's it. And this will be the last step on these chairs. Doing the protectant will be. Um, I'm not doing any type of wax or anything else like that. So that is it. Um, hopefully that was helpful about how to use the protectant or choose a protectant. Um, you know, so just to give you an example too, like I actually have some Gator High, but I'm saving it. I have a cabinet job in June. Um, so I typically will use Gator Hide on like cabinets, tops of kitchen tables, um, outdoor porch leaners. Um, if you do any pots outside, that would be good for Gator Hide. Um, outside of that, I almost, I almost always use clear coat. Um, Oh my gosh, that's a lot of mulch. I know. My um my stepson is actually coming to do our yard this weekend, so I'm super excited. We have a lot of snakes here. They're doing a lot of construction and building. It's just driving them into our yard. So I'm scared to do anything outside anymore. But yeah, and it's so hot today too. Whew, I bet you guys are tired. <laughs> All right, you guys, so that's it for tonight. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Enjoy the beautiful weather. Hopefully it's beautiful where you're at. And um, please share this video if you know anyone who could use it. Thanks. Have a good night and have a good day, Philippa. Bye-bye.